So after all of the syntax we have studied this week, you might be wondering what do you need out of all of this to make a language that works. In this video, we'll review the few settings that you need to adjust to decide on the basic ordering of the words of your language. And again, just as a quick summary, the main idea of the week is that sentences aren't just strings of words. Sentences have constituents like noun phrases and verb phrases. And there is a certain hierarchy connecting these constituents. This hierarchy is there to provide a structure of meaning for the whole sentence. What you need to decide is what the order of the constituents is going to be in your language. Maybe your language is going to look like English, where you have subject, verb, object, as in I love New York. So the subject here and the verb and the object together. Maybe your language is going to look a little bit like Japanese, which has these two flipped, where you have I, New York, love. So your language can look like any of these. How to make that work? Let's look at a few of the settings that you'd need to set in one direction or the other to make the order of a language. For example, you need to decide on what's going to be the relationship between a subject and a verb. Is the subject going to be first? or is the verb going to come first? You need to decide what's going to happen to your complements, to the head complement relationship. Are your verbs going to come before your objects, like in English and Spanish and Arabic, or are your objects going to come before your verbs? So like Japanese, where the head is last. This would also affect prepositions and nouns. Are you going to have prepositions and nouns, like in English, Spanish and Arabic, or are you going to have nouns and post positions like in Japanese. How about your adjuncts? What is it going to be the relationship between verbs and prepositional phrases, adjectives and nouns, adverbs and verbs? Let's look at a few examples. Here we have the phrase, I eat pizza with friends. The subject goes before the verb for English. The verb eat goes before the direct object, pizza. And the preposition with goes before the noun, friends. So you can see how this sentence illustrates these three settings. It also illustrates how the verbs need to go before the prepositional phrases. I can eat with friends. You In English, we have the adjective before the noun. So we have hot pizza. But the adverbs and the verbs can be in either direction. You can have both I already left and I left already with the adjective either before the verb or after the verb. So these are some of the switches that you need to set, some of the parameters that you need to set in order to decide the simple order of a sentence in English. Japanese has slightly different settings of the parameters, and so it has a different word order. For example, in this one, I, with friends, I'm sorry, let me start again. I, friends with, Pizza, eat. So here we have the subject, watashi wa, before the verb, eat. Same as in English. However, the verb and object are, um, English and Japanese are flipped versions of one another. In English, we have eat pizza. In Japanese, we have pizza, eat. Pizza o tabiru. They're also flipped regarding nouns and prepositions, which in Japanese we call postpositions because they come after the noun. Tomodachi to, friends with. And the whole prepositional phrase also needs to come before the verb. Friends with, eat. The adjectives need to come before the nouns, as in atatakai pizza. And the adverbs need to come before the verbs, as in mo tabeta. So you can see that Japanese is slightly less flexible in its, in its order, and that Japanese and English are mirror images of one another in many of their settings. Let's look at Spanish. Here's the same sentence, I eat pizza with friends, yo como pizza con amigos. We have that the subject comes before the verb, I eat, same as English and Japanese. Regarding the verb and the object, uh, Spanish looks very much like English, yo, Quiero pizza. I want pizza. S V O. There's an asterisk there because there's a particular um, group of words that has a different ordering. 
as such as this little word here, it, for yo la quiero, I, it, want. These words are called clitics. They are like tiny pronouns that you have in many Romance languages, for example. You have them in French and Italian, and it, this it is replacing the word pizza. So if you have a full noun as a direct object, you, you need to have SVO. But if you have one of these tiny pronouns as the direct object, in many, time, in many circumstances, you can have the order S-O-V, I, it, want. Regarding prepositions and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go back because the prepositions and nouns are here with friends, same as English. And the verb eat needs to come before the prepositional phrase, eat with friends. Spanish is fairly flexible with adjectives and adverbs. You can have the adjective before, I'm sorry, you can have the adjective um, after the noun or before the noun. Una pizza buena, una buena pizza. Both of, mo, uh, both of them mean good pizza. However, they mean slightly different things depending on the ordering. You also have uh, this with the adverbs. Ya comí, already I ate, and comí ayer, I ate yesterday, where the adverb can be before the verb or after the verb. Finally, a cool example is modern standard Arabic, which is like the written standard for the Arabic language. And here we have the verb coming before the subject, as in Akulana pizza ma ashabi. I eat pizza with friends, but here the order would be eat I pizza with friends. As you can see, the verb comes before the subject. The verb does precede the object, same as we had in English and Spanish. And the prepositions come before the noun, as in English and Spanish, with friends. Regarding the prepositional phrases and the verbs, the verbs come before the prepositional phrases. Eat with friends. The adjectives usually follow the nouns, as in pizza hot, and uh, the adverbs can come either way, like in Spanish. You can have already I ate or I ate yesterday with the adverb before or after the verb. So these are some of the parameters that you need to adjust to decide if, uh, the order of a basic sentence. There's a few other decisions that you'll have to make, and we have studied some of these parameters before. For example, whether the subject is going to be present or absent in your sentences. Uh, for example, it could be absent if you have already mentioned it in the past and you don't need to repeat it. You also need to decide whether your question words are going to move, for example, to the front or to stay in place. And let's look at two final decisions that you have to make. Is your language going to have copular verbs like to be? And is your language going to have articles like the and a? So copulas are words like to be, which link uh, a noun and its property. For example, I am a person. All of these mean the same, I'm a person. And in the languages that do have copulas, like English, Spanish, Mandarin, Japanese, and Swahili, you can notice that there's some element that links the two words. And by the way, in Japanese, the order is S-O-V. It's I, person, am. So all of these have a copula, but there's languages that don't have copulas and they get along just fine. In Russian, you only need to say I, person, ya chilavik. Same as in Arabic, ana insan and saya orang in Indonesian. No verb, you just say I, person, no copulas. The other decision you might have to make is whether to include articles. Articles are these tiny words like English, the, which like specify that you're talking about a specific pizza, a pizza that we know from context. There's many languages that have them. Um, English, French, Arabic all have some article. Cook Islands Maori has the article te, as in te kaineo y te pizza. But again, there's languages that don't have articles and they get along just fine. In, in Russian, you have ya yem pizzu, I eat pizza. And then you'd have to know from context whether this is the pizza we're talking about or some general pizza. 
By the way, even if a language doesn't have articles, it, it can still build the same meanings. It just does it with different grammatical resources. For example, in Japanese, we have the classifier seven people. But then you can put the classifier before or after a noun. And that's what gives you the meaning of the. For example, if you have samurai seven people, this just means seven samurai, like some seven samurai. But if you have of people the of people the samurai, of people of samurai, this means that these are the seven samurai, like in the movie. That these are the seven samurai that we all know about. Shichinin no samurai. So the so the position of the classifier is going to tell you whether it's some seven samurai or the seven samurai. Not uh, and there's no articles. All right. So these are the settings that you're going to need to decide on in order to make the syntax for your language. This is the end of week five. Next week, we'll talk about meaning.